Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Lost Odyssey. In the last video we <clears throat> uh, finished up the side quest in Goza refugee camp and now we made it to the crashed magic train site and we're still searching for Kaim and Sarah and we just entered the burning livestone uh, or the burning cave and we cleared the first area of the cave and we are now in the second area of the cave called the path of dankness so we're here and we are at the <clears throat> entrance to the path of dankness so go ahead and head north There's nothing really interesting on the ground here. <clears throat> Just make your way to the next section of the cave for a scene. Okay, so once you get to the green um, poison in the air. If you look straight to the back of the green smoke, you'll see a chest in the background. Now, you're going to get hurt pretty bad in this area. So, I would highly suggest running in there, getting the um, chest, and then running out as fast as possible. I'm always ready. So I'm going to quickly get in there and then out. And you'll get Black Magic Spell Forcia. Which is well worth the poison damage. But that did massive damage so make sure to heal your um, party members up. Back to full health. And then once you've done that, go ahead and exit to the east. And ignore the western path for now. This does not look good! continue to the north until you come to a few um, gaps in the road that you can jump. So go ahead and jump over um, the first two gaps and then head west to make a little detour. And on the last platform um, where the path splits to the west is a chest we can open. That contains a diamond spirit band. <clears throat> With that out of the way, go ahead and jump back over the gaps. And then continue to the northeast. And enter the next area of the cave. This is the path of poison mist. So first thing we're going to want to do is head north for a scene.
And now we're gonna head west. Well, northwest. And slide down a little slope. And then continue northwest up the hill to reach a rock that we can ram. So press A to ram the rock off the cliff. And this will block the hole that the poison mist was coming out of so that you don't have to deal with that. <laughs> so after that's done, go ahead and head back down. And this time you're gonna wanna head east. And then continue heading north around the curving path until you eventually reach the next area which is a room filled with geysers like before <laughs> just calm down okay As soon as you enter the geyser part of the area, check the southern geyser in the middle of the area to the south to contain a sea. And then head over to the east side to reach another geyser. <clears throat> Inside this geyser, we will get 1000 G. Making sure that there is no items we miss. Okay. Then after you get the geyser with the thousand G, go ahead and head north and slide down the slope to reach another geyser with an object inside of it. This contains 500 G. bunch of geysers around here so just to the north of the geyser with 500 G inside of it in the center of the area more to the north is another geyser with an object inside of it and the last one the last object that you can find inside of a geyser in this area is three seal crosses got that go ahead and backtrack a little bit south and head east up the hill to reach a treasure chest that contains five beat stones and that is on the east side of the area after you get that you're going to want to continue over to the west side of the area and climb the slope, except this time be careful because you don't want to slide down to the bottom. Instead, you want to slide down just a little bit and then head a little bit north to reach a chest that contains Cubic Music Score 6. So it's been a while since we've seen one of those. And with that out of the way, carefully slide down the hill. And head
head up north and then continue heading northwest to reach the next area of the screen. This area is the path of strange rocks. <laughs> so I told you this cave was kind of long and I wasn't kidding. <clears throat> so go ahead and head north for a scene. When the path splits for the first time, go ahead and head west <clears throat> to come to a chest for two thief key rings. This time take the east, east path. Continue heading north, and when the path splits again, I can do this. splits again you'll have a lower path to the east and then a path to the west <clears throat> so go ahead and take the west path and quickly cross over the, um, the geysers before they blow you off the side now as soon as you cross over the geysers there's going to be a very narrow path so you're going to want to hold down the B button and walk really slow and be careful not to get too close to the edge or you will slide off. So very carefully walk up to the geyser in the center of the path. And once it, whenever it settles down, hurry up and run and grab the item that's glowing in the middle <clears throat> to obtain five paraweed needles. And then carefully continue north without falling off. <clears throat> now the path is going to split again. It goes west and east. But this time you're going to take the eastern path. yourself heading down into a little pond of water once you're in the, the water go ahead and wade all the way to the north and the water is going to get really deep and that's how you know you're going in the right direction and at the northern part there is going to be a pillar that we can ram so if you stand on the uh, southeast side of the pillar choose A to ram it <clears throat> you're gonna notice a splash of water on the other side of the pillar so once that happens go ahead and walk around the pillar to reveal a hidden chest that fell into the water which is very hard to miss or very easy to miss I'm sorry <clears throat> and open the chest for some spirit magic called ailment break
after you got the chest in the water, go ahead and wade back to the eastern path that we took and head back up the hill and back to the cross that we went east at earlier except you're going to want to head west this time and be very careful because there are geysers that are coming out of the wall Get, if you accidentally get hit, as long as you don't move too much, you won't get thrown down below. But once you safely cross the two geysers in the wall, you're going to get to a bunch of rocks that you can jump over. <clears throat> now, notice the rock that is more towards the middle of the rocks. It has a slightly different colored shape. It looks more darker and more black than the other rocks. So as soon as you jump onto that rock, it's going to fall down. So the trick is to avoid that rock altogether. And go ahead and head left. And hop around the rock. So that you're safely on the other side of the rocks. go ahead and head north for a scene and finally you're going to exit to the north going to be at the underground lake which is the last part of this cave thank goodness so go ahead and save your game at the save point to the north and there's going to be a pretty tough battle coming up so you, you might want to prepare a little bit First of all, heal all your characters back to full health. And secondly, if you have a warm vest, go ahead and put that onto one of your characters. Um, I'd probably consider putting the warm vest onto Mac. If you want, I'm not even going to really worry about it. Um, but you definitely want to put any freeze onto Ming if you have it, and a warm vest onto one of your mortals. Once you're ready, go ahead and head north and follow the path around until you get to a wide open area where you're going to get a scene. Oh. Whoa. Climb! Climb! I can't sense a pulse. They can't be dead, can they? Yeah, don't panic. Everything's fine. Don't, don't, don't worry. Calm down. I just can't hear it. I sense a huge energy surge. So, after the scene, you're going to be thrusted into a boss battle with the Ice Magic Beast. <laughs> now, this boss oh, is pretty yeah. hard. More good news. I didn't know a creature like that lived around here. They're probably just a manifestation of whatever power is causing this awful cold. Can we save Kaiman Sarah if we beat the creatures? 
no if. We will defeat them. Now, some people consider this battle one of the hardest boss battles in the game. So if you put that warm vest on one of your mortals and equip the antifreeze on the main, you should be at a pretty good advantage. And earlier, whenever we were at the Goats and Refugee Camp, I recommended buying a bunch of ground up bombs. So if you did that, then you will be in a you will have a pretty good advantage on this boss. So we're gonna start off um Go ahead and equip uh, Jansen with the Diamond Spirit Band. And the first thing you're going to want to do is use Powerus on Mac. Now the, the most important thing to take note of on this battle is this boss has Auto Reflect. Meaning that at the start of the battle he automatically has Reflect on him. So be very careful and whatever you do, do not cast Magic on him or he will just reflect it back at your party so whatever you do do not cast magic on this boss he will reflect it straight back at you which is one of the most aggravating things about this fight because we mainly have a bunch of spell casters so go ahead and equip the diamond spirit band to Jansen and use powerus on Mac first of all and um, With Ming, go ahead and use all Barricadus on all your party members. With Cook, go ahead and use all Shieldus on all your party members. And with Mac, go ahead and set up the three combo attack. And as you can see, He's already showing, uh, already inflicting uh, signs of freeze on our characters. So you're gonna want to go ahead and get that off him, off your characters right away. And lastly, if you got the ground up bombs that I told you to get earlier, we even have a ground us bomb, so you can use that with Jansen on the Ice Magic Beast because his element is water. So remember, no magic, just use a bunch of bombs. And I'm gonna use, um, let's see here. I'm gonna use ground up bombs with everybody. And continue the three combo with Mac. Okay. So ground of bombs will hit uh, somewhat for about 750 damage, and the ground us bomb will hit for 1800, which is very nice. Meanwhile, Mac is doing uh, almost a thousand damage per hit with combo. And there we go. We have two people that are now frozen. So go ahead and use a Blazing Ruby on Mac. And a Blazing Ruby on Jansen. To cure that status immediately. Okay. That our characters are back in business just continue with the ground of bombs and you can use composite magic um, all generate with 
Ming, as long as she has learned her composite magic up to date, go ahead and put all generate on all your characters. And Cook can use Zephra while Mac uses Combo. Forcia will hit for ma massive damage. So just keep up the combo attacks with Mac. He's going to be your main physical attacker for this battle. All generate will have constant health re regeneration. Zephra with Cook will definitely get all your characters back up to full HP. And we're going to use the rest of our ground bombs and hopefully he should uh, keel over this turn. And this should finish him off. Okay. And there he goes. The ice magic beast has just been obliterated in only about three or four turns. So I'm sure you're probably wondering what the uh talk was about about the ice magic beast being one of the hardest boss battles in the game all it takes is good preparation and you should be able to pawn this boss first try with absolutely no problems the main thing though that you have to watch out for is his freeze attack and his auto reflect so just remember if you're having trouble with this boss just don't use magic on him instead use items ground a bomb or ground this bombs if you have any put powerus on mac all shieldus and all barricadus on all your characters all generate with ming if you have composite magic and with that have mac use combo constantly and he should uh, be defeated very quickly if you are still having trouble with all of this or if your characters are getting frozen make sure to put the antifreeze onto me and any warm vest onto all of your characters all of your mortals if you have more than one and if for some reason you're still not able to beat this guy which you should be able to no problem you might want to level up your characters this is a great place to earn uh, lots of experience um, I would I would suggest getting to at least level 40 um, and you can go higher if you're having problems but other than that you should be able to take him out rather quickly so after the boss battle rejoice because you just beated one of the more difficult battles of Lost Odyssey Thank you. Thank goodness. 
This time, you saved us. Thank you for being so brave. Mac. Thanks, Jansen. Don't worry about it, buddy. We've got bigger problems. By the way, uh, you can always get a job as an ice sculpture. Kidding. Why is Golden Boy still hanging around? Who is that guy? Everyone, get on board! <sighs> You're all safe. Well, we've been kind of through hell and back. I mean, we're running and fighting. Yeah, not that you'd care. How did you find us? The pendant that I returned to me. What? There's magic energy in it. We've been tracking its output. Oh, I see. We've gotten a lot of help from this pendant over the centuries. Yes, we have. Captain, you've got a new ship! This is the Nautilus. It belongs to my son, Said. That's me. Wow! The great pirate Said in the flesh! It's great to meet you! So the great pirate said is Seth's son. Ah, you must be Kai Morganar, the immortal doing the dirty work for Ura. That was a long time ago. And here we have Kaim's beloved wife, Sarah. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> And Numara's thousand-year-old Queen Me. It's an honor to meet you. Please, go easy on me. <laughs> In fact, back then... He hadn't even been born then. Wait a minute, Me. Did you get your memories back? Yes. That's great! Welcome! On behalf of the Nautilus. I, uh, think you know this pretty boy here. King Tolton, why are you here? He's been used and betrayed by Gongora. So, his objective is the same as ours? Yeah, he's still wet behind the ears. But I think we can make something of him. A daredevil, right, Mama? Daredevil? Yeah, a real macho man. Hmm. What? Uh, I, yeah, I thought something was in your eye. Nothing. Who does your hair? Uh, yeah. It's okay. He's been abandoned by Gongora. Left for dead. Okay, so after the scenes, you will see that Seth and Sed and Tolton have arrived on the Nautilus to pick up Kaim, Ming, Jansen, Cook, and Mac. So finally, the parties have been reunited after a long, long time. And with that, it looks like this is the end of this three. So I'm going to go ahead and save my game before the disc change. <clears throat> and it looks like we are on disc number four. So with that, I'm going to conclude this episode of Let's Play Lost Odyssey. 
and I'll see you guys back for the last disc where I will explain how we are going to go about completing it. See you guys next time on the next episode of Let's Play Lost Odyssey.